Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Deadfire with me, Bring It Dawn. Let's continue scaling Cahopa's Fang. The mountain rises above you, so tall it seems to pierce the sky. Climb the mountain. You heave yourself onto the landing. A cave yawns before you. Great clouds of oily black smoke roll like exhaled breaths from the cave mouth. Enter the cave. You wade through the smoke, your eyes streaming and lungs burning, and make your way into the cave. Oh, we got two level ups. Uh, Jody will get Arcana and Religion. I have two options, either Pillar of Holy Fire or Divine Mark. Let's grab Divine Mark. And Aloth, Mechanics, and Bluff. I think I'll grab Uncanny Luck on Aloth. Huh? Right. Enemies ahead. You should let's go. Great. Great. Oh, traps detected in the wall of flame. <laughs> go figure. That dog won't hunt. Let's take care of these traps real quick so we can actually access the archers. and Jody with the party so they're not getting focused by the archers on the far side. <laughs> and let's try to summon just to eat some shots for us. that guy and Mo throw out another one of those oh. <laughs> take them down all right go get him guys mm -hmm. <laughs> Time 
Time to separate hey, the chaff. That wasn't half bad. Huh? Yeah. This is futile. Huh? Hi. What do you need? Hmm? Nagas no more. We haven't seen one of these before. Fire Naga Sword is exceptional. Generic greatsword description. Interesting. Sure. Uvala? Could be Uvela. Last for 101 seconds. It's probably worth casting right now. Fan of this guy shooting my priest. Uh, we'll see if we can distract him a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Happy to I hear you. Uh, may I help? Yeah. 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 Trap on this side. I assume there wasn't one on this side. My character doesn't have a wound. But it could also be something that he's immune to. Take him down. I need to try something else. Good thinking. Stay behind me. Yes?
Radico. So all the damage that Uvala's taken up to this point has just been from the raw damage on Gouging Strike. It's so much value uh, from these damage Let's over go. time until combat I ends effects. Reap what I sow. I? This is futile. Oh, it's not down yet. There we go. Oh. It is no use. I cannot get you. Hmm? Sure. Perfecto. <laughs> Take him down. Good job, Adair. Hmm? Hmm? Heat radiates from the statue in scorching waves. Also, this wall back here looks really cool. Well, don't see why not. It looks like molten brickwork. Oh, two uniques. That's exciting. Rekvu's Scorched Cloak grants blood fire. Where converts burn damage to health while they carry one or more injuries. So burn damage heals for 10% instead of dealing damage. Well, I know at least one fight that'd be good for. But you need at least one injury. We can make that work. This cloak once belonged to a Juana barbarian known throughout the archipelago as Rekvu, Dread of Invaders. Local legend holds that Rekvu appeared only when her forces situation was at its most dire. Rekvu often sustained injuries in battle that would have killed any other warrior, and yet she never died. In one such early battle, Rekvu was set fire by a devious wizard. She continued to fight through the horde of enemies, her armor ablaze, until she slit the throat of a bitter rival whose blood finally quenched the wizard's flames. Rekvu suffered such terrible burns, she was unconscious for several weeks while her body healed. Rekvu's scorched cloak was lost when her unconscious body was dragged from the field. And Magrin's favor. I assume will pair nicely with... Oh, hello there. With Magrin's blessing. Fiery Core, plus two all firepower levels. That'd be fantastic, my Paladin. And it starts at Legendary, so we don't have to invest into it too much. And then Burning Lash, plus 15% damage is burn. Oh, this is great. This battle axe was carried by a warrior of the Forged in Fire, a militant Magranite warband, and saw service during the Saints' War. Reportedly, it was crafted by Rufus Akmont, the sect's most venerable weaponsmith. While the weapon was still glowing red from the forge, Rufus is said to have begged Magrin to bless the weapon and its creator. When Rufus quenched the weapon, the oil ignited, now the injuring Rufus and burning his smithy to the ground. While later searching the rubble, Rufus claimed to have recovered the axe head, still red hot. The blade never cooled, a sure sign of Magrin's favor. Like blazing Core, plus two all fire power levels, 15% of burn damage dealt by Magrin's favor, heals the wielder. Living Pyre, uh, same, plus two all fire power levels, and kills with Magrin's favor grant 5% damage as burn and 5% action speed stacks four times. I assume until the end of combat. Burning Burst. Kills with Magrin's favor deal burn damage to nearby enemies. And plus 15% damage is burn. Enduring Flame. It retains the effect of Burning Lash. And 6 burn damage per 1 second for 4 seconds. The target on scoring crit.
These are two very exciting pieces of equipment. The cloak a little less so, but still very good. What do you need? I trust you. So I'm thinking. Looks really cool, too. Then with the shield, we're wielding fire and ice. It's a nice little thematic pairing. Though we also have Mogren's Blessing. Somewhere. Oh, she says it equipped. Well, I have something to think about, at least. So how's this coming along? 16 out of 100 and... 86 out of 100. We're getting there. Uh-huh. And we do have the Battle Axe Proficiency, right? We do. Um, what's a good island name for... A Naga-infested island. Well, the mountain is called Cahopa's Fang, so maybe the island itself could be Cahopa's Mouth? Crystal Desert. I probably should have rested. Uh, Aloth has an injury. Alright, another mega boss it looks like. So we'll just back away from this. If we can. We seem awfully close. Mm -hmm. Well, so let me leave, so... Again, we'll come back to all these once we're max level. Oh, not on the ship. <laughs> I guess I should just wait out to sea. A plagued ship. A flare arcs into the sky from the horizon before bursting into a reddish cloud that slowly breaks apart. Plague ship captain, Lucas says quietly. It looks like a rabbitai and junk signaling for assistance. Geordi red-handed and Copperhead exchange nervous glances. What does Copperhead care? He's dead. Luca leans in close. Don't think I need to remind you what happened last time we interacted with the plague ship. Copperhead smirks. There's risk in anything, I. 
Even without a spy glass, you can spy a few living crew moving about above deck. All right, pull alongside. As your crew guides your ship next to the afflicted craft, the captain stumbles over. A spear of bright white bone protrudes from the side of her neck. God, she rasps, you're here to help. You look down and see that the joints of her wrists and ankles are wreathed with similar eruptions. The skin around her wounds red and weeping. Only one other deckhand gets to his feet. His throat is almost entirely enclosed by a necklace of bone, a spear is pushing through his skin. We can trade if you can. Uh, we've a pair of enchanted gloves, supple and quick. He leans heavily against the mast. His breath comes shallow and fast through the strange bone growths. The captain frowns. Thank you, Oroko. I know what those mean to you. Mate dips his chin. An heirloom's not worth much to a corpse. What are your people afflicted by? It's Rimbon Jude? The captain says, a raspy voice quivering with fear. The bone frost. It's already claimed the lives of half of my sailors, and I worry we won't be able to treat the rest. Call forth the sickest sailor from your crew. We'll bring them aboard, examine them, and provide suitable remedies. Jordy red-handed Gox, have you gone mad, Captain? It's Bone Frost, Rainbow Jude, the scourge of sailors from the White that wins. It'll sink our ship for sure if we catch it. You heard me. As the sailor shuffles from the plague ship to yours, your crew clears a broad path. Some make warding signs or uh, mutter prayers to Rhymergond while the sick man passes. I can't thank you enough, the captain says. Without your help, who knows how long we would have been here. He offers you a small box. Take this, please. A token of my appreciation. Thank you. <laughs> Option three. After a short period of examination, the sick sailor returns to his ship with enough remedies to treat the rest of their crew. Weary but hopeful, they wave goodbye as your ship continues on its way. We got Agor's Swift Touch, Bullet Catch, while above 50% health, 5% chance of incoming ranged weapon attacks inflict 0% damage, It's a lot of percentages, and Rapidity, plus 1 Dexterity and plus 5% action speed with weapons. Agor Willow had many passions, good food, fine wine, fast women, but enjoyed none so much the pastime of dueling. He never considered himself a violent man nor could he deny the pleasure of besting a rival in single combat. To that end, he made a point of taking offense at the smallest slight, demanding satisfaction from anyone who glanced sideways at him. He would fight with blades, but pistols were his weapon of choice. He boasted the fastest draw and the quickest aim in the Palatinate. By considering his record, no one alive was able to dispute the claim. In a particularly brazen act of swagger, he said to have once allowed his opponent the son of an influential earl, the first shot. If the legend is to be believed, Agor caught the bullet in his hand mid-flight before shooting his young opponent dead. Agor bragged endlessly about the remarkable catch. He credited his thick rawhide gloves, and undeniable prowess of course, for saving his hand and his life. The bereft earl soon sent a posse to arrest the braggart. Unaccustomed to fighting more than a single foe, Agor found his speed and skill insufficient to prevent his date with the gallows. As your mainsail goes up and you head into open water, point counter Foldis lets out a raspy cough and looks around, nervously. The rest of the crew grits their teeth and mutters curses. It appears the sickness has spread to your ship. Lost a lot of morale during that event, but that's okay. We got some nice gloves for it. Oh shoot.
of some fog of war up here. <laughs> there we go. Sickness racks your crew. Great. The illness starts slow. A cough here, the shakes there. But then it hits the crew hard and fast, washing across the deck like a rogue wave. Work slows to a standstill as your crew shuffle stiffly about the decks. Spears of bone butt at their wrists and ankles. When the spears are wrapped through their skin, they leave red, weeping wounds in their wake. Groans of agony find you from every corner of the ship. Wow, 20 morale lost. Luca finds you in your cabin. Through the open window, you can make out the sound of one of your sailors retching violently. If this keeps up, Captain, your crew will be in no state to sail. They hardly are as it is. <laughs> Option one. I think we know why they're all sick. Uh, find the ship's surgeon. You have to tell me why everyone on my boat is sick, Shield Sister Dahlia. Arimbon's Jude. Uh, Shield Sister Dahlia answers gravely. The bone frost from that plague ship. It'll claim lives if we don't treat it. What would you have me do? Shield Sister Dahlia pinches the bridge of her nose. Best thing to do would be to medicate. Hopefully we've got the stores to treat everyone. Break out the medicinal stores. Everyone gets what they need until this clears up. About 25 medicine too. Shield Sister Daily returns from the hold with a small chest containing dark black soil. Ballistic worms, the hand grunts. They eat away the sickness causing the bone spears. It's neither pretty nor pleasant, but it'll save a life. Each member of the crew goes to Shield Sister Dahlia in turn to have their diseased marrow entomologically excised. With the correct remedy applied, uh, the crew quickly recovers. Soon they're on deck belting shanties towards the horizon. You sail on. Jeez Louise, that was a costly event. Start building up our morale a little bit. Oh, it's Captain Hank West Treasure. And a shipwreck. to do it from on land. Alright, so through the wreckage. 169 bronze Oa. And that's it. Alright, then uh, Junivik or Univik Village. I said no to talk. The drowned barrows are closed. An elderly dwarf folds her arms, her disapproving frown warping the tattoos that encircle her face. If you want to join your son, you can offer yourself to Nemnok next season. Listen. Our elders crossed the land bridge to protect their children. You disgrace their memory feeding our young to the mountain Anik. The auburn bearded dwarf waves toward an imposing peak on the horizon, its cliff face shaped like a leering skull. Nemnok will release my son, or. or perish. Tatok utters the words in a hate filled whisper that causes Anik to hiss through her teeth. Listen. Kali served the tribe. 
You should live by his example and stop speaking foolishness. Ah. Uh, I lived a full life in the shadow of the Barrows. Kali deserves the same. If you reject Nemnok's accord, then you are truly lost. May Kali find peace in the embrace of the Mighty One. Ani grits her teeth and marches across the settlement, putting her gaze to linger on the distant outline of the mountain. Ah, I spit on Nemnok. An orphan dog. I've got it. Nalvi. While Nalvi is following your party around, you receive a bonus to resolve, and party members receive a reduced penalty to recovery from their armor. That's pretty solid, too. In fact, I think it's a better... ...bonus than Abraham. Also, these gloves might be worth equipping. Really on anybody. Lose two max discipline, but I tend not to burn through discipline anyway. Yeah, so much of it. So let's give him this. Not bad. The air feels slightly warmer around the carved figure. Is that a giant imp? On it. Oak. While Oak is following you around, you gain bonus might, and your party is less likely to be hit by enemies. These fish have long since dried and lost their odor. Alright, I'm gonna call it here. Uh, next time we'll speak to the folks around the Yunvik or Junvik village. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.